Hi everyone, and hi Moti. Hi, no. Moti Cristal uh, is, is the CEO of Nest Consulting, a global negotiation uh, consulting firm. And Moti has worked on many, many different types of negotiation, including uh, uh, high stakes, including diplomatic, business, military, you name it. Moti has been there, and I'm, I'm so glad that you're here with us as well. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for the opportunity. No, well, <laughs> thank you. And um, what I've asked you is, since I know that you have a, a, a wonderful model for dealing both with preparation for the room, but perhaps more importantly in this context, being in the room or at the, at the table and dealing with things that arise, I'd like you to share that. The students are right now in our moment in the class. They've, they've, they've learned about they've prepared for, and now we're talking about a toolbox. We're there. So I know we need to back up a little in order to get started, but that's yeah, what we're no, going to it's, it's, it's interesting because when you ask me to prepare a certain uh, talk to your students, I was thinking what, what is the most important thing that I would like to say. Yeah. For, but actually I decided to take the second one because the most important thing is what you are actually teaching them that negotiation is a managed process. Right. That you don't come and intuitively negotiate. Right. It doesn't work like this. Right. It might work successfully one time, one shot in the bazaar, right. but in real life negotiation, it doesn't work. It is a managed process. Right. So this one you covered with your students. I want to take the second one. still that term managed process yeah. is a great one. Write that down, folks. Yeah. Managed process. It right. is a managed yeah. process. Uh, the second is, since it is a negotiation is a managed process, I want to control it. Not only because I'm an Israeli and I'm a control freak, not only because of that, but because once you control the process, you can impact the outcome. Right. And I'm very careful in choosing the word. I will never ever say control the process, control the outcome, because people right. who say control the process, control the outcome, never saw a negotiation process that derails because of surprises or things that you have no control. External external happens, yeah, happening yeah, yeah, elements. Can't control, right. And I will I will I will come to that. Okay. So my uh, um, uh, big idea is control the process, impact the outcome. Right. Okay. Now people will ask how actually you control the process, and controlling the process have the idea has three building blocks. Okay. Number one, a very thorough process design. Yeah. Number two, setting. Number three, dealing or the capability to deal with unintended consequences. Uh -huh. I go one by one. First, process design. You already taught your student about uh, comprehensive preparation, analyze your interests, alternative, right. prioritize issue, fine. Right, they've been very much, we've been, we've talked about everything you need to kind of do in your mind and on paper and exactly. preparation. Right. Yeah. Now you enter into the room, the first thing you have to do in order to really control the process is what I call reality check. Reality okay. check is a terminology or word uh, concept that comes from hostage negotiation to make sure that uh, the negotiator and the hostage taker are talking of, you know, about the same, they have the same understanding of what's going on yeah. there, yeah. that they're not hallucinating. Yeah. Uh, in real life negotiations, many times we uh, saw that people are not talking about the same data. Right. Uh, right. So, right. so you start by actually let's make sure that we understand that we're talking about the same Excel sheet, the same size of land plot, the same deal. <laughs> the same car. Right? The same car, <laughs> right, exactly. Whatever it is, yeah, right. Whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, then you have to agree on what we call the basic deal. Mm -hmm. uh, we see it a lot in software, uh, uh, and IT world and uh, startups that people think that they're actually selling uh, the rights, but right. the other side is not interested in buying right. ownership, but rather licensing. Licensing, using. Exactly. Uh, okay. So. We, this is, uh, this is yeah. not yeah. a long negotiation. Right. This should be a very short piece that you actually need to know that you're talking about the same right. deal. Sometimes it's called framework agreement. Right. Or agenda, so, but it's not quite. It's, it's, it's a little different. I it, is, it is a... Naming the deal? Naming the again, deal. Okay. Naming the deal 
is it the a cell, a, a lease, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, licensing, mm -hmm. to make sure the very general contour of, of, the, of, of the deal. Yeah. And then you enter into your detailed strategy, right. whether it is uh, uh, distributive or cooperative. Right. You know, I'm coming from a region that not always cooperation is possible. I've heard that, yeah. Yeah. So we, you, based on your pre-analysis of the other side, of the uh, references, of the uh, known patterns of the other side, you already know whether you're heading towards a cooperative agreement right. uh, process right. or a distributive process. Right. So once you know that you're towards each one of them, you design the process, steps, stages, elements, and on all the mapping out that you do. Exactly. Right. This is the first element, right. process design. Right. You have to know all the time that you are one step ahead of your counterparts in the planning right. of the process. And that's, how, that's how control happens. Exactly. So you say to the other side, this meeting will be dedicated for brainstorm options. Right. We will conclude the meeting with a list of options. No need to make decisions now. Right. Okay, you summarize the meeting. What we did today is we brainstorm options. Now we have a list of options. I suggest that each one of us will go back, analyze them, and next meeting we will do so and so. You are leading Exactly. We're leading the process. And remember one uh, nice saying that we love to say, everything that goes without saying goes much better when you say it and even better when you write it. Right. So okay. it is strongly recommend to send an email summary or if you can summarize by the end of the meeting, right. what did you do and what's the next step? And that's an opportunity to frame. It, it seems exactly. like innocuous. I'm just writing, I'm just summarizing. I'm just summarizing. No, it's not. But when you're, you're choosing the words, you're choosing the order, you're exactly. choosing perhaps the next tasks. Exactly. You're even choosing the mood. It was a great talk. Exactly. Or, I'm glad we, you know, we, we, we sat through that. It was tough, but we pulled through. So you're even framing the mood and the, the motivation. And that's, that's really exactly control. Yeah. control. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly control. The second one is setting. Yeah. Setting is all the physical elements of the meeting itself, okay. which means venue. Yeah. Are we sitting across a rectangle table? Uh-huh. That it's clearly that clearly has two sides. Yes. Always sitting in a round Limited. table. I remember one time in the late 90s, we had a very intense scheduled meeting with the Palestinian team. I you came, were representing the Israeli. Yeah, I was. I'll, in, just, I'll yeah. just make this clear to you. <laughs> I was. I was uh, in, on the Israeli side, and I knew that it's going to be a tense meeting. Right. I came one hour earlier right. to the hotel, right. and I asked the waiters. To change the table, it was supposed to be over dinner. Yeah. To change a table from a rectangle table uh -huh. to a round table. I will never forget the face of the Palestinian chief negotiator enter into the room and look and say, which side are we sitting? Right. I told him, you know, pick a side. Right. He smiled and he gave me a, you know, a good <laughs> curse. I mean, in a good sense, yes. in, in Arabic. Appreciate so, it. Appreciate it. Like, right, right. I know, that, right. that's good. And actually, round table is one of the most clear physical elements to generate cooperation. Willing together, the process. The process. process. It's a round rather than confrontative. Who participates? Right. It is a matter of business culture. For example, Japanese tend to bring big delegations. Right. Uh, but it's also a matter of relevant people. Sometimes in real, in real life negotiations, people are bringing representatives or participants that are completely irrelevant sure. for the meeting itself. But why they are there? They are there in order to protect or serve internal interests, right. what you call behind the table negotiations. Right. So I need to bring my uh, finance officer, despite the fact that we're not talking numbers at this meeting, because I want the finance uh, uh, officer, the CFO, to be part of the process rather than criticize the process right. once we get to the numbers. Right. Right. So who you bring to the room? And the same, just to, just to 
uh, or piggyback off that if you're uh, talking, let's say, about uh, uh, divorce negotiations. So, uh, you know, obviously both parties can bring their lawyers, but often in these discussions you might encounter that someone brings their sister. Exactly. And their sister isn't a, a divorce consultant or, or a divorce attorney or a financial planner or anything, but is A, there for support, and there might be a real emotional need for support. There probably is a real emotional need for support. And also, you're adding something else on it, saying some people will be involved, no matter what the process, some people will be involved behind the scenes, yeah. either as spoilers or supporters of the process. True. Sometimes you want to have them the, there On the table, at, exactly. Yeah. Because, because there is a certain dynamic right. that happens across the negotiation right. table, even, even in, in, in contested uh, situations. Sure, sure. Uh, both people are in it together. Right. They go through the experience together. Right. The, the, the only, my only uh, measurement is whether the participation of the person is constructive to the process right. rather than destructive. Right. I, if, once I control the participants, once yeah. I control the setting, I will make sure that the people who sit around the table are constructive right. to the process. Mm, sometimes clients ask me, how can I control who comes to the table. Yes, so, I mean, you can control your own side to, no, some, to not, some extent and not always you're about to come. Uh, right. but, but you can, you can, first of all, you can ask. You can pick up the phone to the other side or to the other side secretary and ask who is coming from your side because I want to rent, because I want to have a, you know, a, an equal it's number, equal number. Uh, all these um, elements. Are we doing this meeting over dinner? of a lunch is food or some, you know... Something. Something yes. is yes. something to eat. Yes. I'm much in favor of introducing some food on the table. Why? Because sometimes experienced negotiators are good actors. Yes. They're faking. Right. And when a person eats, she or he cannot you fake. Don't, you don't act with your mouth. Exactly. Oh, that's bad. Exactly. Yeah, that's so, bad. so... You, you, have, you have to think, you, you have to think whether, you know, a tall office building yeah. has two sides, one seeing the view yeah. and the other with the back to the view. Right. Which one? Right. Which That's side? These things yeah. matter. Environment matters. Exactly, yeah. because negotiation is like a show. Like a, it, you have to stage the elements in order to create the constructive atmosphere you right, want to, to support create. support the atmosphere. Exactly. Every element that you have, I'm, I'm really seeing it as a stage now as you're talking, and just like a stage, you set the lights in the right way, and you set exactly. the props in the right way, and you want to make both the audience feel that the actors are real in the context, and you also want to make the actors feel at home and able to be there, whatever it is that they're supposed to be. Well, and I will not share with you some nasty tactics, for example, playing with the air condition, too cold, too hot, not, not turning on the air condition. It sounds like you just did. Uh, no, I'm, I'm no, no, just no, no, teaching no. my clients how to protect. How to this. defend yourself exactly. against them. You would never use that yourself. I will never use these tactics by myself. You know, something I, I like to uh, get in this course is that often, especially in distributive and, and more competitive, is that um, you, know, you can use these things as a shield or as a sword. As a sword. Most negotiating teachers focus on the, on the shield, and that's, I understand why, and that's for, for both ethical reasons and also because we figure our students, they'll, they'll figure it out and use it either if they do or if they don't. But I like to, I'm okay with being straight out about saying you can do this, decide if it works for you ethically, plus we'll have a unit in ethics. Go study that unit on ethics and then figure out whether this is a good thing to do. I, I cannot agree more with you, Norm. Uh, I also present, mainly when I come to the uh, module of uh, difficult negotiators yeah. and hard tactics, yeah. I definitely train my uh, students and my uh, clients right. how to defend themselves right. uh, from these tactics. However, sometimes we are not naive. You right. know, in life you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. Okay, good one. Uh, so, so you have to know that you have sometimes uh, setting or staging tools. Right. I'll tell you a story. Go. I had to negotiate my own uh, own uh, renting uh, a house. Right. And the guy, the, the the owner, was a guy, a young guy that wanted to um, get himself into the showbiz. Okay. And I have some friends in the showbiz mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. 
So we scheduled a meeting in a coffee in Tel Aviv, and I asked two of my friends just to pass by. To walk by and say, hey, Mati, how, how are you doing? doing? I love it, okay. And, you know, these were, you know, famous faces. Yes. And he was like, oh, do you know her? Right. Oh, do you know him? It, it, it just, it just it, showed it him... Facilitated. It facilitated. Uh, it yeah. showed him uh, we didn't sign the deal because okay. there was yeah. no Zopa in terms of the Forget price. That. Okay. Right. In this but but uh, it showed him, it indicated him through a setting tool right. that he might have some other benefits from establishing good relations right. with me. Right. So this is an ex- right. a setting it's example. Great, great example. Uh, so you control, you, you do your best to control the setting and you know, because we're not naive, that everything you do in controlling the setting has effect on the negotiation. So sure. sometimes it's nicer than others, like when you set it in a round table because that's a cooperative move, so it's something everybody can smile. And if it's setting the air conditioner to a little too hot or a little too cold, so some people might frown on that and that's good. It, I mean, it, it's good that people can make those judgments exactly. for themselves. But ev- don't, don't be naive. Everything you do, let's say, for example, maybe you're at a, at a meeting with people who don't want to cooperate with you, and you put a round table there. That's manipulation as well. We call it benevolent manipulation because yeah. it's not supposed to work against them. I just don't use the word manipulation in that context. I know. I, I, I use it for different I know. Uh, uh, purposes. I, 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 I would call it a tactic. And I know why, because, because you know what the difference between a tactic and a manipulation is? No. That it's a tactic when you use it and a manipulation when someone does it to you. <laughs> well, okay. that's, that's yeah. a good... Okay. Uh, I, I use different okay. friends, but this is a different conversation. Yes, okay. Um, so the third element, okay, the good. first was process design, right. the design. second was uh, setting right. and right. environment, and the third is your uh, mental capability to deal with unintended consequences, oh, okay. with surprises. Things that just... Things that have nothing to do with you or with the other side, usually generated by external actors, human beings, or forces that have a dramatic influence on the table. So give us, give us an it example. Could be, it could be, you know, uh, there was a hurricane, Katerina, on an ash cloud over Europe that really cancelled flights, right. thousands of flights. Can you imagine how many... Critical negotiation We're just was at the point, right just there. at the yeah, point, right. and now it was postponed for right. like uncertain time, and you are frustrated, right. and you you did very well with the process design, right. you did very well with controlling everything, and then these are the uncontrolled element right. in any human interaction, right. any human system right. is uh, uh, has or always faces yes. this type of unintended consequences. Yeah. The question now is when things happen to you, right. whether positive, opportunities, yes. or negative, like disaster. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was in a negotiation uh, with some Russian uh, guy, and he called me two days before we flew to Ukraine, right. and he said, you know, my uncle passed away. Yeah. His uncle was the mayor, the one with whom we negotiated. Uh-huh. In the middle of a football game, he just got a heart attack and passed away. This is something that, okay, what does it mean? Right. It means that we, we definitely we cancel the trip, we right. cancel the meeting, but does it mean that we cancel the deal? The deal, the, the, I mean, certainly, even if you continue the deal, the dynamic is fundamentally exactly. changed, uh, not to mention perhaps the people you're dealing with. You know, I, I was sitting, I was sitting uh, um, in, in a law firm in Jerusalem, mm-hmm. and one of the lawyers got a call, and he was like, oh, ta 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 is his wife gave birth two months earlier. The other party. The other party. Yeah, yeah. And now we're like, okay, so we're like, cool, but what we, now? we have to finish. <laughs> no, that, no, what now? That, that's yeah. definitely yeah. not a good... Uh, yeah. uh, you, you have to be... In order to deal with these uh, external factors yeah. that you have no yeah. control, the first thing to do is to bear in mind that you cannot control the world. So you're putting you're putting good limits on your your your, your first. Cannot we need to control? We need to control, but we can't control the world. We cannot control. Yeah. The second is that once you're more you know mentally prepared for uh-huh. changes and uncertainties, and in my vocabulary you live in peace with uncertainties, then you 
are you develop a more mature way to look at things, also as an opportunity. Right. For example, if my relationship with that lawyer were not good relationship, right. that might be a good opportunity now to fix the relationship by, you know, that's that's okay, Mr. Cohen. Take the time. I will order my. I will ask my client to hold everything. Yeah. I'm even willing to sign on a no shot clause, right. which means that I'm not looking for alternatives right. while y you are handling your personal. So I turn and even this going beyond that uh, by by just being very happy about his new, you know, his news. And, and yeah, but I didn't like him really. Well, like I said, <laughs> right. and you, you can't fake that very. I well. cannot fake okay. it. I don't Good. believe in. Good. Uh, okay. I, Believe in strength, Good. but but uh, definitely process-wide, I took advantage of that opportunity yes. Yes. to uh, uh, correct or to signal what I could give in terms yes. of, of relationship. Right. But the idea is a be aware yeah. that while you try to control everything, there are many elements, a certain number of elements that you cannot control. You cannot control weather. You cannot control traffic jam. Can you imagine how frustrating it is a traffic jam? before a, 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 a very important meeting, and you come like 25 minutes late, sweating, angry, nervous, right. and the other side said, we were waiting for you, Mr. Christ. I'm like, Arr! So yes. that's, that's yeah. understand that these things might happen. Right. Take, uh, try to absorb them in peace, yeah. and try to lever them again, because you know the process design, yeah. because you know the setting, because you have an overall control. Now, when something, when a surprise comes in, you have to see how actually you take it into the. You know, just, just I'm, I'm going with your hand motions, and <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the surfing metaphor comes exactly. to mind. So, exactly. and I'm not a surfer, but sometimes <laughs> I watch surfers, exactly. and I want to be like them. But also, I just like watching, and it like they. They can be very good, and they can plan, and you choose the board, and you choose your your, your body, and you exercise, and you you prepare something. But then something. comes a wave. But you don't control the wave. Exactly, exactly. And they see opportunities. A great metaphor. Oh. A great metaphor. Yeah. Multi, thanks so much yeah, for this. Pleasure. This has been wonderful, and 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 I'm certain that just like uh, I mean, I'm feeling this, and I'm sure the students out there are feeling this. There's so much to work with here in real life, right? Right? Right at the table. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Good luck, folks. Thanks.